Everybody, Fran and Kim with Jump Realty. It is Wednesday, February 21st. I hope you had a great family day. I did. Um, so you saw the numbers for today, and those are going to be a little skewed because it's a four-day week, given the holiday. Um, so there is that. But there is something I want to talk about today. Two things. Number one, home inspections. Um, there used to be a time a few years ago where, you know, you kind of crossed your fingers and prayed and didn't put a home inspection in because you lowered your chances of getting the house and everybody was crazy and desperate and, you know, but that's not now. So do a home inspection, do a pre-inspection, um, know what you're buying, but understand this, your home inspection is a roadmap for the next five to 10 years. Every house is going to have something. I've rarely seen a home inspection that's perfect. So it's more about information. What are you going to be looking at for the next few years? What do you want to take on? What don't you want to take on? Um, and what does it really look like? It's all information. So my suggestion is to not only do a home inspection, but possibly put aside a chunk of change knowing that you're going to seriously offer on a few properties and you'll need some money for home inspections for pre-inspections and pre-inspections will give you more information like in the sense of you'll have that information going in and how you want to price it and how you want to offer knowing like hey I'm gonna to have to replace this furnace I'm gonna to have to do this all in the first year or you know what hey I can put that off that thing's not such a big deal to me I don't care about that and I have a friend who's a plumber who can do that everybody's different but it's a road map so make sure when you're figuring your money for a home that you put aside um, maybe a thousand dollars for a couple home inspections it is money well spent which brings me to my second thing, money, right? It's what everybody's worried about when it comes to buying a house. And so if you're waiting to get in the market, if you're waiting for the interest rates to drop or your down payment to be something like a certain number, I think there's another piece that people are missing that's equally, if not more important. And that is reality, information. Is what you're telling yourself you want really available? Can you get in to your preferred neighborhood at your price point? Because I think several buyers out there, a lot of buyers are telling themselves what they want. Like this is their ultimate house and that's the only house they're ever going to have. And it has to have these 16 criteria because they're kind of cushioning themselves from the fact that they might not get what they want. But this is life and not everybody gets what they want and not Everybody has to have their dream house off the bat. I think it's more important to look at where you can get in the market than where you want to get in the market and have a balance between those things. And the reason I say that is um, I had a client recently have a certain criteria, a certain area, a certain type of house and was kind of attached to that, really liked the area and wanted to live there. And it just didn't work out. And she turned to me and said, we need to pivot and I want to pivot and this is what I want to look at and boom she got everything she really needed so I think this is a case of the rolling stones which is you know you might not get what you want but you get what you need and I think it takes a fearless inventory not only financially but personally to sit there and go what do I really want and what can I really get and where do those two things match up and have a realistic idea of what's out there on the market because you know you a lot of people like oh, I'm browsing I'm just seeing what's on the market no what they're doing is browsing their dream house and not necessarily browsing what their price point is or what area they can get into and I think it's time for buyers we'll address sellers next week about getting really fearless and honest about where you are and what you can afford and what that looks like and that that's okay it's okay if you take your ego out of it and start in not your preferred neighborhood, but maybe a few blocks over, Whew. a few blocks over, right? And work up to what you need. Your first house is just your, your chit. It's your chit in the market that you're going to trade up for later on because this market is only going to get better and better in the sense of Winter's got some good things coming. You know I've like honed that, honed that, honed that again. But get in now. I firmly believe we will look back on this time and think of it like before COVID. And be like, oh, I should have bought in 24. 
I should have bought in the beginning of 24. Look at what the prices are now. So something to think about. Little fearless moral inventory on your housing needs. <laughs> and that is my rant for today. Have a good week, people. We will be back next week.